everyone. Uh, what I'm like to talk about is a little bit here and there with yesterday's session with measuring and sensing and with today's sessions, uh, data to knowledge, we get there eventually. In the following, I would like to uh, show you something about the archaeological management task of the Forster Center, the office I represent. This office is responsible for the heritage assessment needed uh, before large-scale constructions in Hungary. These are called the preliminary archaeological e evaluations. Uh, first of all, let me allow, allow me a personal note on that, with this motto, of, of course. Uh, so far, I've been working my whole life as a, as a uh, site identification expert, and I find this task really interesting. I, find, I think lots of Hungarian archaeologists don't think it's boring because we're quite an excavation-centered people still. I think site identification is a thrilling and menacing task to give, to give precise assessment under difficult circumstances, trying to understand the landscape in any given uh, planned motorway track, knowing that the assessment has a nearly immediate uh, impact to the, to, to the archaeological heritage is a really challenging task for an archaeologist. Uh, I really think about ourselves in this game of preventive archaeology as the goalkeepers, and we are not uh, remembers by the we, we, we are not remembered uh, by the sites we found, but by the sites we failed to find. As, as with goalkeepers, nobody mentions what they saved. <laughs> Everybody just, just remembers of the goals. So it, 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 it gives us a fairly uh, practical point of view, and I really think I have a practical point of view. I, I am going to please, please take a note on this, because what, I'm, what we are doing is... is, is I, I, I like to think of it, it's fairly practical. Therefore, I find the notion of these preliminary archaeological evaluations uh, to be a really inspiring one, and it was my task to... to I, I was there from the, the beginning, and I would like to talk about its methodology. What have we have chosen? What are we doing uh, with it, and why? How are we trying to use these data? Uh, so, first of all, what are those? This is the boring part. Uh, these, uh, from, from 2011, these primary, these pre preliminary archaeological ev ev evaluations should be made as a mandatory part of the permitting process of large-scale constructions. In Hungary, large-scale large constructions mean uh, with a total cost of over 1 million and uh, 600,000 euros. <laughs> these evaluations consist desktop studies as well as field data. Uh, with the cost of, of uh, up to 0.35% uh, of the total construction of budget. So it's quite a large sum to do uh, surveys. The goal is to make a precise uh, archaeological project plan, assessing the optimal mitigation process. These documentations <laughs> should consist the actual area, cost, and time of the archaeological mitigation. The funding of the mitigation uh, process is based on these numbers. Uh, these documents are made by Forster Center as a, go as a government office, an independent third party between the constructor and the party responsible uh, for the archaeological excavation. So it's quite obvious that these, these, these ev 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 evaluations are, are really a cornerstone for the preventive archaeological task in Hungary. The second question, why are those needed at all? For that, I, told, I, I give you a case study. It was done in uh, Nabucco, of course, is now, is, is now history. But still, we had to do a lot of tasks uh, for, for that in 2009 and 2010 when it, uh, when it, uh, when it was, uh, was still, still planned. And, and we did, did an intensive field survey during the line pipeline. And as you can see, it goes, goes through Hungary. It's a quite representative approach because it's went through seven counties, when more than more than 300, uh, I didn't write it down, but, but it's more, more than 380 kilometers long pipeline, which was I I intensively surveyed by field survey. And what we found is that was only 77 sites previously known and scheduled. However, we find, you know, together 349 archaeological sites, which means this is a big gap. We have a, a fairly big gap with only only 22.2.7% uh, uh, of, of the archaeological sites known. Archaeologists in my country are usually not, do, do not like when I talk about this gap. They, it, it makes them, makes them uncomfortable. 
Uh, however, this gap is still there and, and we have to do something with this gap. That's why these uh, assessments are needed. We, 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 have, we can only fill this gap with lots of field works, with lots of, lots of actual, actual uh, uh, field work. So, so this kind of works is really, really for, I would say, preventing fire. Okay. Uh, yes. In the following, I'd like to highlight the background of this decision pro uh, pro uh, process of how how we we feel how we're trying to fill this gap, and talk about our, our point of view, how we address this problem, how we think it can be tackled best, and what opportunities it can hold. First of all, a little bit of Hungary, just uh, very shortly, uh, or. Our Carpathian Basin is a, is a pretty fertile soil. It's, it's provided very rich colonization potential for agricultural co communities since the Neolithic agricultural transition resulted in quite high density of archaeological activity. There is no great difference today, I'm not meaning the Neolithic <laughs> part, but the, but the agricultural part. A very large area of Hungary is, is actual uh, plough land. Once I made a, a uh, <coughs> collection comparing it with with the with, uh, United Kingdom, and it turns out that uh, Hungary actually has more uh, plowed plowed areas, plowed land than than England, which is twice as big. Uh, so 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 we have more than fifty five percent of the total area is actually plowed, which is a very very large number. So plowing working as a field survey technique is is a quite obvious one, and we. We we usually doing that as a first as a starter as a first step. It has it has fairly good good op, it, it holds a fairly good opportunity to 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 do survey. Um, indeed, it's it, it's really it's really shaped or 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 meaning of, of, of field survey. Even the the Hungarian word uh, field survey is 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 actually plug walking. So. Um, it, what we do, so as for starter, we, we are doing a field survey, a uh, systematic GIS based uh, field survey. Afterwards, we, sorry, I messed my papers. Afterwards, we perform magnetometer surveys within this area, including areas with no surface finds, but high potential for archaeological features. So we could narrow down the actual archaeology, uh, Kali inward areas. In this surveys, we always measure until we find the borders of the archaeological sites in the plant. I, I, I will talk about geophysics as a geophysical <laughs> survey later in detail. In, in Hungary, we, we have a fairly high, high potential for, for magnetometry, as the, most of our soils are clay, clay and lusty soils with fairly good, good responses to magnetometer, but I get, get there later. In the first step, we, we okay, maybe we, uh, uh, I, uh, I will show uh, one one case study and, and, and one, one picture what we we are doing uh, with uh, with field survey. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it's quite good. This this, this little oh, oh I have I have one I have this this this, this little blue, uh, blue dots are are, are, are the actual finds uh, shreds of pottery on the surface and these these tr these strange uh, uh, light blue lines are, are the actual walk lines where, 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 where they are going. So we, in every time, every, every, every planned motorway gets, uh, gets, gets walked thoroughly uh, and, uh, and extensively. So this is, this is basically the, the, the first step which are we based, based on, on finding the actual features. Now after that, we are doing the geophysical surveys. Uh, I'm fully aware of the problem that we are only uh, surveying with, with, with geophysics those areas where we actually find surface finds because obviously it's not always uh, uh, archaeology. <laughs> it's just just where we can can find uh, survey finds uh, is that that direction archaeology. However, or or uh, current current. Processes are, are are fairly fairly hard because because by by, by legislation we only allowed to 
do it more more intensive survey where, where, when there is actual mm. uh, actual archaeology. So first of all, we have to find archaeology in order to 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 be be allowed to to do do uh, more extensive survey. But still, if we see this is for example the M44, the planned M44 waterway, it's more than uh, as far as I know more than 60 k k k k k kilometers long, and you can see that. There is more than 30 percent of, of the whole area where we were, we were able to do uh, archaeological, uh, we, uh, geophysical uh, surveys. So it's, it's it's quite a lot. Let me show you just uh, some of the pictures when 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 we were we were able to to actually do some some really good mitigation. We have some former former uh, not not so well field survey data from the the area which you saw this this this. This, this green green dots are always somehow some some archaeologists went there <laughs> and did <Yeah>. did something <laughs> we, we managed to 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 narrow it down to the actual coast. You can see this is this is an, this this is actually pretty important uh, uh, and can shows why geophysics is is fairly important for us. Uh, if we ha uh, wouldn't be, be able to do any any. Geophysics, maybe, maybe it's a better like picture. All our, all our cur current knowledge would be, a, 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 would, would be about those sites. Would we try and do some, some, um, some uh, trial trenching in, in this area? For it, it, it would be there and there, mm. and we would miss out, miss out the really, <laughs> really interesting part <laughs> of the of, of the actual site, and that that would would be a problem because this area. Might have been only found uh, during during the, the construction, which is a big problem in everywhere, not just in Hungary. <laughs> so uh, sometimes we we have to think to think larger because because we have we have huge huge areas uh, with with archaeological uh, archaeological <laughs> involvement, and, and and it actually helps us a lot to to narrow it down to to. Try to understand the, the actual process, what we should do, and and yeah, it was done. This is a big, big Sarmatian uh, uh, cemetery, which which was which was found found just by this. So so I really think it's it's a powerful, a really powerful and robust tool to to help us in in, in preventive archaeology. Sometimes we have to do really large areas, and I'm, and I'm not sure it's quite good, but this this is one one kind of meter. So it's, it's 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 a fairly large 30 hectare hectare a area which we also have to survey. This is uh, uh, this is a uh, this this will will be a junction where, between two motorways in, in 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 eastern Hungary. So 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 it's it's quite easy, easy to see where we should uh, should. Uh, uh, do survey later, and, and afterwards, based on these these surveys, we do trial e e excavations. I, I, I also show you a short, short, quick note on that. This is a rubber factory. Yes, that's, I, I think we all, we always we, 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 we always have those those top secret secret projects. Uh, guys, we have uh, work with always to, to talk about that as sub factory because <laughs> because we was all <laughs> weren't allowed to say which company will, will will actually come here. So this is a sub factory. Uh, so we we, we made uh, the, the actual factory factory will be will be will be, will be uh, constructed here. But we managed to find find the, the actual ar archaeological involve, or involvement, and based on this area, we these are the the, the, the little red dots where, where the actual trial trenching had take take place, more in an area when we weren't able to do survey because it was corn over there when, when in, in time of the survey, and you can see that it was quite good, and this is. I like to, to talk about this in detail a bit later. I, I don't think this is important that. Uh, in every each and every case of these geophysical surveys, there are near immediate impact, a near immediate uh, trial trenching afterwards. So we get to see how strong our our prospection really is. So it can be seen that it's, it's fairly good. If you see the the, the, the little blue, uh, blue dots was what was the prospection results. The the, the light blue is the possible. Possible ones, and it can be seen it was pretty good. The red one 
those as uh, shows as where there were, were actual oh, sorry actual archaeology uh, within these trenches. So it's 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 a pretty good tool. Uh, right now there had been a a a a a, 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 a far away ex, uh, excavation in this, but I don't have have these answers. But I was told by the archaeologists that it, it's pretty good. Our uh, results. Uh, this is our, our equipment. What we what we are working with now. Uh, we have we are working a lot with uh, with the census five channel device. It's a it's a fairly robust tool. Yeah, we need <laughs> we need more on those because we have lots of work work to do. Uh, uh, very shortly, I want, I'd like to talk something about the resistivity measurement. We have some tasks with this. I'm, I'm not really focusing uh, on this uh, aspect in my presentation now, but uh, it, it has to be done because we have works in uh, urban areas where where magnetometry is not really useful. Here's here's one of our tasks uh, from from last year. <coughs> this is a um, it's a shipyard where, where where there had been a large uh, large palace from the Roman times. It's is it's the is it's the governor of Pannonia's palace, and and it, it it's, it's a fairly tricky area because it was a shipyard from the from the 18th century. After that, so what we managed to find with with resistivity measurements is the little blue dots. That, that, that's where where the actual palace was. These are these. Not not aligning lines are the are the actual shipyards, mm. uh, former sh uh, sh shipyards area. And we managed to find additional uh, additional uh, uh, Roman age uh, age buildings there and there, and also maybe a, some some features of a port as well with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am going to be fast. So, <laughs> what 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 I really really think interesting is. Is 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 that we have a really integrated approach with the, with uh, with magnetometry and and trial excavation. We are doing it in one shot. We have in our in our in our uh, center we have three division. Uh, uh, we write write three pillars. One one division is is well one department is 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 responsible for the for the field survey. The other one is for the geophysics, and the third one is for the trial trenching. And we're working very closely together. The problem is, I mean, magnetometry is no big news. Uh, everyone knows a lot about magnetometry, even in Hungary. Uh, lots of survey has been done before. Uh, lots of, we know, we know lots about it. I, I don't think we should talk about magnetometry as a, as, as a new method. I really think what we should do is how to integrate it as closely as possible. So what we are doing now in our, in our, in our department is we have geophysicists and archaeologists work, working together as closely as possible. Archaeologists should, should know the, the basic task of, 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 of a geophysicist, and a geophysicist should, should know what's, a, what's an archaeological excavation. So this, this way we can, we can do it very, very closely in, in, in integrated. <laughs> And these, these, the decisions, if it's, if it's made formally by subcontractors, these decisions are usually not, not happening. These uh, geophysical service is usually seen in Hungary at least purely as a, as a scientific contribution. It's not, I don't think it's a scientific contribution. It's a very, very, should be a very, very closely integrated uh, 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 process of the, of the preventive archaeology. That's what we are doing in order to give it full potential and make useful predictions. So, yeah, uh, I try to be good. Okay. So, and, 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 about, the, 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 uh, uh, and, and about very, very quickly, the data to, to knowledge part. One is, is a crucial part. We have to get interpretation. We, I, I have a lots of talk about this with Hungarian archaeologists. I really think we should get as clear interpretations as, as we can. <laughs> And we are doing this this with 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 the following following noises. Uh, we made lots of projects. We made more than thirty three projects. We we have surveyed more than five five million uh, uh, square square meters in a, in the last two and a half years. Uh, <laughs> this is a map in our in our office <laughs> showing uh, showing where where we could do. I I I really ha haven't had had any any better ones. Still, what I think is really Robust tool is we have to do surveys throughout in Hungary in very various conditions, very various soil types, various archaeological features with a near immediate impact, with a near immediate proofing. What I what I, what we are doing right now is building a database on 
where magnetometry is really useful and where not so much useful, to try, to try to understand where it's, where we can use it and, and where not. We have already have some, some results with about, about, about five, 500 features. It's, it's already counting because there's a, a little bit late lightness on the, oh, I'm going very sorry. <laughs> a little bit, uh, uh, one or two years delay between the excavation and, and the actual documentation we, we get and, uh, and the surveys. Uh, but still, 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 we're trying to to to, to understand uh, where we can go with it. And uh, what we did uh, was 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 beginning to classify this data to 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 see. Uh, and 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 we can see that that uh, usually where where we have have problem is the feature is is really little thin features which are. It's not the top soil depth, but 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 the features thickness. When it's when it's really thin, we have difficulties finding them. However, we are we are fairly good at finding the the, the larger, the, the more than a half half meter large large uh, pits pits and features. And what we can do in, in the other top reference is usually I I was told that that flux gate magnetometry is is not really useful below. Uh, Below one meter or a or a or a wider uh, topsoil depth. Still, our data shows that topsoil depth does not really matter. It's it's is the size, is the feature size. So we usually cannot find uh, the small, the less than three uh, half meter large uh, uh, features and uh, uh, and really shallow features. And we have some problems as well. In, in, in some areas, we have drift of sand areas in Hungary. Now that it is our, that, 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 that's where where we have really really problematic features, and and with cemeteries, this was one of one of a big big problem for us in in Morhalom bypass when we wouldn't wouldn't be able to to, to predict a, a, an early medieval cemetery. These, these green dots are the cemetery uh, parts, so we have to. We we really have have to think about about cemeteries with with graves. Uh, uh, grave detections. Here's another picture from that. Yeah, yeah. And and to co to conclusion, was it really useful to use magnetometry in these areas? I can show you only show you that uh, or overall our our projects when when we get to get uh, get a chance to 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 see it through to see whether we, we said they're gonna be archaeology or, or or we said that there is not that, not going to be archaeology. We have we have an eighty percent of of, of of predicting power, which I think fairly good. Uh, we we still have to work on the on those <laughs> on those other twenty percent, but I think this is something we should do. And I think this this is a powerful opportunity for us to to really understand geophysics uh, with uh, preventive archaeology. Okay, uh, I'd like to thank you. I, at the last, last note, I'd like to thank to my colleagues. Last year, I, I have a format slide, but I did it fast. Last year, we have 141 field days uh, with, mm -hmm. with, with, with the crew. I really think it's quite a lot, and, and i really like to thank my colleagues' dedicated work on these uh, aspects, sometimes very harsh, uh, under very harsh conditions. So that's, that's, uh, that's where we are right now. Okay. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Sorry for the